Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending our webinar, Using Bifacial Modules to Increase Profits on Commercial Solar Projects. Um, we're here today to discuss bifacial solar panels. If you're not familiar, bifacial solar panels produce energy from both sides of the panel, um, converting direct and reflected solar energy into electricity. Um, so today we're going to be interviewing our panelists of solar technology experts and commercial developers about their experiences using bifacial panels um, and how this technology can be used to increase profits on commercial solar projects. Um, we have a lot of 15 minutes at the end of this webinar for questions, so if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A section or you can also put them in the, the chat section. Okay, let's get started uh, introducing our panelists. So we have Nick Carter, um, Product Training Manager for LG Electronics. Hi, Hi Nick. everybody. Uh, Evan Riley, founder of White Pine Renewables. Howdy. Austin Williams, VP of Business Development at Point Lib Power. Good morning. And Scott Thomas, President of Option One Solar. Hello everybody, good morning. And I am Renee, I'm the host for this webinar today, and I'm from Point Wood Power. Okay, so let's get started with questions. And once again, we're gonna have a little extra time at the end if you have any questions. So please feel free to put those in the Q&A box or the chat box. So we're gonna start off with Austin. Um, so bifacial gain is the extra energy production you get um, from using bifacial panels rather than monofacial panels. What factors determine bifacial gain and what is the difference in bifacial and monofacial panel solar energy production? Yeah, thanks. Um, so bifacial gain is, uh, is directly related to the mounting system uh, of, of the module. And there are four factors that really um, affect uh, high production from the backside as well as the front side gain. And um, that includes height of the module, um, tilt of the module, um, spacing of the module, as well as the reflectivity of the ground cover. So the higher you can increase those, uh, those numbers, the higher the backside generation of bifacial modules should be on your project. Great. Um, does anyone else have anything to add to that answer? Okay, great. So next question, um, kind of on the same lines, Nick, what are the economic benefits of using bifacial panels on large commercial projects over monofacials? Yeah, so maybe I can uh, lead off with just giving you some context from the LG perspective on our products um, so that people have the, uh, the background from the product from the manufacturer's perspective. Um, we have two product ranges, Neon 2 modules and Neon R. Neon R is the back contact module, so you don't see any wires or bus bars on the front. Neon 2 is um, available both monofacial and bifacial, and that has 12 fine wires on the front for conducting the electricity out of the cell. And the uh, bifacial version has a clear back sheet. So uh, I think some people may not realize that our cell is actually inherently bifacial. Um, you don't really get any significant gain when you have a white back sheet, but the bifacial version has a transparent back sheet that enables you to generate from the back as well as the front. And on the data sheet for the bifacial version, which is probably somewhere around 400 to a 410 watt 72 cell module currently, um, you'll see what we label BiFi 100 and BiFi 200. That's an extra 100 watts per meter squared or 200 watts per meter squared from the back, um, respectively. And so as a manufacturer, we put out the product with no real control over where it's going to go. And it may go to Austin and go on to a white roof on a pure electric sticker may go onto a ground mount on, you know, over a grass surface, the ground coverage ratio, as uh, Austin mentioned, you know, the, the height, those variables may change. And um, those factors all go into the, um, the economic benefits. Our pricing, 
I, I'm in training, so I normally stay away from the dollars and cents and don't get, I leave that to the salespeople. Um, but I think the, uh, the game is real, given all those variables that we've, we've already mentioned. And the, the pricing is quite similar, at least at the moment. Again, that kind of changes almost every other week, it seems, with like tariff changes, exemptions from tariffs, changing your mind on whether we're exemption, you know, we have an exemption from a tariff, that kind of thing, specifically with bifacial modules, um, you know, aside from all the other changes in the industry. Um, so I think the pricing, uh, at least right now, you know, speaking, speaking as of today, is quite similar from bifacial to mono. So I think if you can engineer that game uh, reliably, then there is a definite economic benefit. And then we do specific webinars just on bifacial. So my colleague did one um, led the last year and go into all the details and a lot of the numbers. So um, by all means, follow up with me afterward if you want some more of those numbers and some of the uh, PowerPoint slides. Okay. Um, great. Does anyone else have anything else to add to Nick's answer? Any economic, extra economic benefits of using bifacial panels for specifically commercial projects? Great. Okay. So, Evan, next question. Um, what bankability factors should be considered when using bifacial panels for commercial solar projects? Yeah, thanks, Renee. Um, so, uh, just briefly, for those of you who don't know, White Pine is a developer owner operator of um, behind the meter solar and storage projects, uh, primarily on the uh, West Coast and in the Midwest. Um, we've got a megawatt under operation and 10 megawatts currently under construction that we're working through project finance on right now and a contracted pipeline of roughly 30 megawatts um, with signed PPAs. So pretty exciting. Um, we do um, focus on projects that are maybe technically a little bit more complex, which is probably where this question is coming from. Um, so with respect to bankability uh, for commercial solar projects, the thing that I think about most is, can you underwrite debt to the bifacial gain? Um, and that's you know maybe not where most people's minds go. Most people's minds probably go to the reliability of the back sheet, the transparent back sheet, or if you're going to get off gassing with like a glass on glass construct and have some sort of like cell degradation because of that, and the gas can't kind of get out because there's no uh, semi-porous back sheet. Um, but from an owner-operator standpoint, what, what I really think about is um, if there is a bifacial gain, uh, can I underwrite that to it and, and should I underwrite that to it? And what does that do um, to me from a sources and uses standpoint? And, um, and then I typically look to independent engineers, um, reputable uh, test labs that can do tests to actually verify the bifacial gain as a function of albedo. Um, and that way I'm not kind of getting out over my skis with respect to what we underwrite in our financing um, and kind of the, uh, the bifacial gain. So um, I would say number one, uh, look first at what you're underwriting from a bifacial gain standpoint and make sure that you have a um, third party who's technically qualified to do so, gives you the green light <laughs> that you're gonna get the gain that you expect and that you underwrite to. And then number two, uh, make sure that you're buying reputable um, bifacial modules from, you know, some of the best like LG module manufacturers so that you know that all the QA, QC and the module manufacturing process has been uh, accounted for and you're not going to have some sort of um, rapid degradation early in the module's lifetime. Okay. Great. Um, anyone else have anything to add? Awesome. Okay, so Scott, um, as a solar integrator, how have you used bifacial panels to grow your business? Uh, hi, thanks for the question. Uh, I, I uh, have been doing bifacial panels uh, probably ever since around 2014, maybe even 2013. We started do, do, doing them with a company called Suncream, and they, they actually are, are uh, they left the market now. They couldn't compete because they did a lot of stuff in China, and then so we kind of got our feet wet with some frames. It's a bifacial module, but it's a, it's all glass module. And then when they went out, when they went 
out of business, we were forced to look for another manufacturer, and that's when we found LG. And so we've been installing LG for quite a while. We've we've done uh, we've done a lot of ground mounts, a lot of commercial uh, fixed till, and and we're now we're starting to do trackers. So I can tell you this: um, we uh, you know you can't believe it until you see it. You know, so we we've done uh, you know we thought thirty percent. By close again, that's pretty aggressive, and I know I know LG is very conservative. We've had we've had a lot of talks, and and so I know if they believe it, it's real. And so um, we have ground mounts, for example. We use they're still using the um, the bifacial uh, 390, the um, neon two, and um, we have ground mounts with 390s on them that are hitting over 400 480 watts today. So. I mean, if that's not proof enough, I mean, that, and then, you know, it's on ground mounts, you're, you're getting, you know, you're getting some um, some high albedo and it's perfect, you know, we have white rocks under them. And so now we're starting to do the bifacials on the trackers and we test at our own, we started doing testing with, at, at, uh, at the labs and we started doing our own, we did our own building and um, we have a full year on our tracker, on, our, on 52 trackers on our own roof and it's producing, um, Fifth or sixty-two percent higher than what what, what LGs would have done on a on a standard fixed hill using LGs in both scenarios. So you know, so sixty-two percent that's a, that's a that's a pretty good factor for economics. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have anything else to add? Oh, I want to add one more thing that, that that's a, that's really important. When you start when we start dealing with uh, you know commercial customers and, and customers that are very picky on, on, on you know, on um, risk mitigation. Well, 20, you know, LG offers a 25 year warranty that includes labor. So that's really, for us, that's huge because now we really, we mitigate the risk. And if we have a problem, you know, that, that helps solve that problem. And, you know, and, uh, and, and we've installed, you know, many, many thousands of those panels and we've never had a failure. So that's a big thing too. Cause I don't, ask, I don't actually have to use a warranty. So that, that matters. Wow. Okay, great, awesome. There goes um, my job and support. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, so, Austin, uh, Point Load Power's flagship product, PV Booster, is a rooftop tracking mount. And in the news recently, there's been a lot of studies being published about rooftop or tracking mounts with a facial panel. Um, how can commercial developers use this? combination of technology to improve profit on their commercial project? Yeah, so um, tracking and bifacials uh, are definitely the hot topic right now. Um, every study you see about uh, the bifacial uh, effect is really related to ground mount and uh, utility scale. And the combination of the two has led to some interesting innovations in the mounting, um, some you know, ways to look at projects and bankability. Um, and I think that, uh, that, that buzz right now is really what's, um, interesting for the commercial CNI space where people are going out and trying to do as much as they can with as little equipment as possible. Um, the, so tracking and bifacials together seem to go very well because we're, we're taking the space that we have, we're maximizing it as far as production on uh, per equipment basis, per square foot basis and uh, really trying to deliver a lower cost of energy for the end user, for the developer, for the contractor. And, um, and, and that combination is really um, what we're looking to uh, employ on CNI rooftops, where in the utility space, uh, technological advances as well as access to capital were really a big driver behind mass adoption of those projects. And at Point Load Power, uh, we're taking the same benefits of tracking and putting it on a place where the reflectivity of the rooftop uh, boosts the albedo significantly, um, where, you know, uh, space, uh, using the space and maximizing the space and maximizing the investment dollar in, uh, in your solar project is really critical. So we think some of these technological advances are going to make their way into the CNI market, which is still vastly untapped um, for uh, as it relates to utility scale. So we're hoping to piggyback on everything that's been going on, all the studies and, and uh, you know, the financings of these projects to um, leverage that for CNI developers and contractors to produce more energy for their clients. Great. Okay. 
Um, all right, um, Nick, so for someone who has never used bifacial panels on any of their projects, what are some factors that should be considered, building owners should consider when shopping for bifacial panels? I think we already touched on some of the kind of design factors. So like Austin said, originally um, height of the surface, your ground cover ratio, you know, your tilt and spacing. Um, the albedo, I guess, is, you know, the reflectivity of the surface that you're over is a key. That can really range, you know, it might only be say around 5% for, for dirt or um, soil, might be double that for uh, and gravel, concrete, and then white sand could be significantly higher than that, you know, maybe 15, 20 or more percent. Snow is um, a great reflector. I guess I was uh, keyed into this being a hot topic, it must be over a year ago now, when we were doing trainings in Canada, and everybody seemed to have already latched on to this snow plus tracker plus by facial was a really key thing. And uh, I, when I first heard it, I thought, oh, this, this is, you know, just one, one company, they've latched onto this. And then it seemed to be everywhere we went doing trainings, everybody was reading from the same script. And it wasn't just um, reflectivity of the snow when you're in normal operation, but it was the fact that the back of the panel could start operating first, even if you had snow cover on the front. And so it would shed the snow off the front earlier. And, uh, you know, I used to have a client in Buffalo, so I know all about, uh, <laughs> um, effect, especially lake effect snow on, on your array. So if you had a static um, low tilt ballasted array on, on the commercial roof and the snow came in, it was just, that was it, you know, you were done. Whereas now if you lift the modules a bit higher, you get some of that reflection onto the back. You can get that snow off the front. Um, I mean, this isn't like an official LG line. This is this is repeated anecdotes from the field. But you know, um, I, I respect those people in Canada and where they were installing, and, and it seems to tie in exactly with what we're talking about today. Uh, for their case, with the the reflection, uh, the high albedo of the snow, the bifacial modules adding to that with tracking, and then earlier start of production um, when otherwise you might have been close to zero. Okay. Great. Does anyone have anything to add? Yeah, we have, we have, uh, Scott, we have, we have several installations of LG panels and we're close to the mountains in Big Bear. We have several, we have, uh, several of everything up there and, uh, and the LG ones are getting backside for, we have ground mounts and roof mounts and they do get backside production in the morning and when, and when it creates heat, you know, it, it, it melts the snow and then like the ground mounts, it just slides off. So it works, it works awesome. And the other ones, snow sits there all day. Yeah. So it does, it does work, absolutely. Great. Okay, question for Evan. Um, what is the O&M associated, the operation and maintenance associated with bifacial panels, and how does it compare to that of a monofacial panel? Um, it's, a good, it's a good question. So uh, we see the operations and maintenance to be nearly identical. So um, from a cost standpoint for scheduled maintenance, assuming that you're not scheduling washings, we see it to be the same. Uh, for behind the meter systems that are ground mounted, especially, or that are carports, one thing to consider is actually cleaning the back of the modules. And this gets into a module specification decision when you're specifying modules for your CNI project. Um, at White Pine, you know, we, we're the developer, we're not the EPC. We also provide financing to EPC partners uh, who require PPAs. Um, so we'll work with EPCs to think this through. But one of the big questions is, do you want glass back sheet or do you want glass glass? And glass back sheet is a little bit less expensive and it may even be more reliable uh, due to the off-gassing um, mechanism that I kind of previously mentioned. But if you are going to have to like wash the back of the module because you're going to get dirt and dust and grime or even grass clippings on the back of the module, uh, it's worth thinking about a glass glass module. Um, so these types of considerations are, are things that we at White Pine help EPCs uh, think through when we're providing um, PPAs to them uh, and their customers. Okay, great. Um, anyone else have anything else to say on that question? 
And I think the ground mount systems, you have to account for the racking configuration so that you don't have beams running across and shading the back. I mean, as, as little as possible, or keep those beams as far away from the back of the module as possible to, to clear that, that channel for the light hitting the back of the module. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Okay, question for Scott. Are there any scenarios in which monofacial panels would be a better choice than bifacial panels in a commercial solar project? Uh, yeah, in my opinion, uh, well, I, I use my, I use bifacial any, any chance I can get. Um, now, uh, but going back to that question, you know, there are situations if, I, if I'm not gonna be on a, on a flat roof or if I'm gonna be on a pitch roof, especially if it could be seen, um, you know, then the customer may have an aesthetics issue, and they want to make they want they don't want to see silver frames, or they want to see, or or we have a real estate issue where I need to use a, like a high performing, a high performing, um, you know, sixty cell module where I can fit more modules in there, so that that comes into play, um, and then uh, and then it depends on the um, the manufacturer the manufacturer specifications because uh, you know it, it all depends on what they want. We, we used to do a lot of it, uh, and I'll have to refer to LG on this. Maybe maybe Nick can help me out. LG doesn't want us to use um, bifacial panels where they can be seen anymore. They want us to use, they want to push their R for, you know, for, for branding and they want to have their black modules up there. And, you know, we understand and we, we comply. And, uh, but for most of the time, when you can see them, the, the, on a parallel roof where you're facing, you know, I mean, mounting on a um, pitch, you're not going to get much gain anyways. You know, there is some, depending on what's the, what the subsurface. But you know, I don't think it's enough to, to um, justify the extra cost for labor and everything else. Everything else you have to do because on the bifacials, we also have to go to um, to um, SolarEdge P505s because there's no end phase that can really handle it that we found. So that, that works. They clip too much. So, okay. So I think in that case, I, you know, that, that, that's the only instances I try to use bifacial where I can. All right. Um, anyone else have anything to say? On that topic. Yeah, to, to refer to that distinction, we um, keep our 60 cell modules for residential and then 72 cell for uh, commercial industrial. Um, so I think that's what Scott's referring to. And I'm supporting the um, AC module version of that uh, high efficiency Neon R 60 cell product. So that's really targeted as residential. That's coming closer to 22% efficient. So Although the the seventy two selling on twos are are over twenty percent, they're not quite the twenty two percent. You know, you're getting three seventy five in a sixty cell module with a built in microinverter on the on the AC module. That's that's the residential product. And then, like I said, about four hundred to four ten in the seventy two cell. The same at this uh, CNI market. Yeah, just just one question. When we were talking about um, you know your a lot of your modules being naturally. Uh, bifacial or your cells being naturally bifacial with the with the change of the back sheet or the glass. Um, do, do you see is maybe just speaking from LG's perspective, uh, do you think this is the way it's going where now that we've unlocked that there's value uh, in in many applications that uh, module manufacturers are just going to be begin producing bifacial modules on, on every uh, on every run or do you feel like there's always going to be a, a monofacial uh, module being produced i don't know i can't i can't speak on on behalf of the corporation's product i mean just personally i think there are differing uh, niches or categories you know there's a, a match for each of these uh, like scott mentioned aesthetics you know some people just want a black back sheet regardless of the loss in production the aesthetics trumps everything if you have a great situation with uh, high albedo and, and maybe with your dual axis tracker um, then it makes sense to go with the, the bifacial 72. I think, I mean, right now we're facing the change in cell size, which is going to be quite a change for um, logistics and wrapping and layout and module handling. So uh, that's probably the biggest concern right now in terms of we've just got things down into pretty determined categories of 60 and 72 cell of a familiar um, format and now that might be changing you know going to 66 72 half cut larger cells wider modules you know heavier modules all those things um, we just to be clear our, our bifacial is a clear back sheet it's not a glass we don't do a glass glass module I mean, 
maybe that comes in the future, but right now the offering is a clear um, back sheet. We do uh, offer just a fraction over 90% of power output as a guarantee in year 25. So, you know, power is, is warranted uh, to only drop a couple of percent uh, at most in year one, and then at the end of year 25, uh, we'll still be just slightly over 90%. Um, it's actually 90.8 with residential with the Neon R product. Um, but I think, you know, the, the reason we're having this discussion is there's value there to be had. Now we're trying to determine what is that value for real? And uh, like Evan said, you know, how much is bankable? I mean, we, we can put out a data sheet and wave our hands and, and share anecdotes, but the reality is who's going to finance that extra production? What's real? What can we rely on? And I know in our webinar, we talked about, you know, maybe you just allocate that extra to car weather variation. So you don't actually add it to the, the real production. It's just covering that variability in the weather and making you even more confident that you're going to meet the original target number. I don't know, that was just something we talked about before. Well, good. Um, one more clarification. So uh, Point Low Power uh, produces PV Booster, the rooftop tracking system, which is a single axis tracker. I just want to be clear. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Misquoted. Sorry. Okay, great. Um, so next question for Austin. Um, recent updates to Title 24 have increased the number of white rooftops in California. Could you explain Title 24 a little bit more and how that's beneficial for people looking to utilize bifacial panels on commercial projects? Yeah, so we talked about uh, reflectivity. Nick did a good job kind of breaking down the, the tiers or what you would call them of uh, reflective surfaces and uh, and I think they all pale in comparison to uh, the white reflective rooftop, which when installed can be like 90% or more reflectivity in year one. Um, obviously keeping it fresh and, and, uh, and reflective is gonna be critical, but um, that fact alone that a lot of this reflectivity exists on many rooftops anyway is a huge, huge uh, boost for the backside albedo and, uh, and really exciting. Now you've got California and other states coming out and saying you have to have this reflectivity on uh, on rooftops or some some level of it, which is is naturally cooling the building and and uh, really useful for the building owner anyway, uh, but then can produce you know significantly more production uh, from the backside for these modules. Um, we think this is a no brainer. I believe that you know California kind of sets the standards in a lot of code and uh, building codes and things like that. And I, I really see that uh, white reflective rooftops are uh, here to stay, only growing more. And, uh, and that surface is, uh, is unbelievable for these productions. So we think Title 24 and, and just kind of a holistic approach to uh, making buildings more efficient, uh, lowering their energy usage, as well as uh, creating a tremendous amount of reflected light is going to um, really be a catalyst or, or help, uh, you know, promote this product and this uh, technology across all kinds of rooftops. Okay, great. Um, Evan, so White Pine Renewables has con or projects across the U.S., um, including on the East Coast. What environmental factors need to be considered when deciding if bifacial panels make sense for your commercial project? So, um, yeah, that's right. So we, we do have pro projects all uh, throughout the U.S. We have some projects under construction right now in the Northeast, um, in the Midwest, and we um, just were breaking ground on nine megawatts of projects this year up and down the central, central Valley of California, where we've partnered with EPCs to provide uh, PPA solutions um, for EPCs. Um, so what we what we think about from an environmental standpoint there's really two aspects to it there is the resource regime and what we've found is that you actually have a higher gain in areas that are cloudier like more cloudy um, mm -hmm. so for example we have some projects that are under construction right now on some rooftops in cape cod in massachusetts um, and uh, for the portion of those systems that have 20 or 30 degree tilts we're expecting higher bifacial gains than um, a fixed tilt system 
that we've issued NTP on um, kind of down by Bakersfield in California. It's a ground mount at a similar tilt. So I guess one is the more diffuse the light, um, surprisingly, uh, maybe for some people, the higher the, uh, the bifacial gain we would expect. And then, um, and that's just on a percentage basis. It doesn't work out on an absolute basis because, you know, if it's very sunny, you have a larger base production. Um, but the other, the other item really to think about is the orientation of the panels and the type of the racking. So some of our projects have a five degree tilt. Um, and those, if they were to be bifacial, which they're not, we would expect a very low bifacial gain. Whereas uh, projects of ours that are, um, that have a very high tilt angle, 30 degrees, um, those we expect a much, a much higher bifacial gain. So from an environmental standpoint, I would say a consideration as to the diffuse component of your solar resource is probably the number one item. Um, and then the number two item would be uh, things like albedo and, um, and panel, panel configuration. Okay, great. Um, anyone have anything else to add? Yeah, that's, uh, on the bifacial, on the till, we actually uh, developed a, um, a ground mount system actually to test this, and we're going to be testing it on our next customer. They're, they're allowing us to use them as a guinea pig. And so we can uh, take this, this uh, ground mount. It can be adjusted from anywhere from 18 to 35 degrees. You know, once it's installed, it can be done anything, anytime. So we're going to try a uh, ground mount and try to do some different things with it by facial and see if we can get, because projections are showing even here at 30% uh, tilt, it'll be um, a, lot higher, a lot higher production. But the challenge with that is, is now you have an engineering issue. Now I have, to, now I have panels that, that, you know, instead of being seven feet, they're going to be nine feet in the air. If I do, you know, and then I have to, um, the engineering, the, the, you go from one and a half inch tubing to three inch and it, it makes it much, much more expensive. So just things to think about. Yeah. Okay, great. I wonder we haven't talked about the degradation of the reflectivity of the surface. So uh, I think Austin said like either one, you've got your really bright white roof, but then um, we need to follow its progress through those 25 plus years and see how it's doing. Um, as we go through that time. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, next question for Scott. Um, you have a lot of experience using bifacial panels. Where do you see uh, this technology moving kind of in the next five years? Does it seem like something a lot more people are going to start utilizing? Um, what's your opinion? Well, absolutely, it's already happening. Uh, every every man, every large manufacturer, you know, Canadian Solar, Phono. I mean, um, uh, um, everybody's making them. So, uh, and they're you know, in, in large, in large, and now, 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 we've used them all. And, mm -hmm. You know, I want to be careful. How I say this because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but LG has outperformed all of them at every every time. And so we, and so that's why we really, we really like LG. And I'm not saying that because Nick's on the phone. We just that's how we feel. We, well, our tests. We prove it, you know, the, the numbers never lie. So that, it's in the numbers. But, you know, so there, there's just kind of two sides to that story because, yeah, we know, we've proven it ourselves. There's no doubt in my mind they work if our, our, our economics thing makes sense. But, you know, we work for, we do our, we're EPC, we do our own. We have about 12, uh, we have about 12, over 12 megawatts right now in uh, contracts and or negotiations. And um, and uh, only one of them is, believe it or not, is, is uh, other than the, the, I mean, the contractor, only one of them is bifacial on the fixed tilt because the um, because the EPCs the, the the main customers have not adopted uh, bifacial yet and and they're not comfortable with it yet. So we're so some of these um, even we, we love it we've proven it, but uh, they have financier financiers behind them that aren't aren't comfortable with it. So we're still, you know they're just not they're just not there yet. So you know and some of these projects can be you know, and negotiates for months, even years, you know, and so it, it, it takes time. It's hard to change a panel midstream when plans are done on a big project. So we just go, but so I see it happening more and more. We finally installed a, a bifacial on one of our schools that worked good and it's, it's just killing it. And then, uh, and I see and all the people we're talking to are allowing us to show them bifacial, um, you know, um, modeling and, and they're starting to open up to it. So, so absolutely next five years, I think it'd be prevalent actually. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the attendee questions. Um, this question is for Evan. Uh, who are some examples of third parties that can help validate the output from bifacial projects? 
Um, yeah, so I think it really depends upon project size and the degree of validation that's required and who's requiring it. So, um, for example, at White Pine Renewables, as the investor and owner operator of the projects, like it's just validating it for ourselves. So there's no kind of burden of proof. Um, so it's just a question of can I get comfortable with the amount of debt or uh, the structure of the financing that, that we're putting on the project? Um, so in that instance, there's not really there's not really a third party. It's just what, what am I comfortable with? But for um, others, um, I think you have to ask yourself, are you trying to convince yourself or are you trying to convince someone else? If you're trying to convince yourself um, and it's a smaller project, um, I would just recommend being conservative. Uh, these smaller projects, the economics can be difficult because while the margins can be material on a percentage basis, it works out to be a small amount of dollars. And that can go away if you have to bring in someone to do um, a third party, a third party test. Um, if it is a larger project or if an institutional investor is requiring some sort of validation, um, you know, working with an institution like photovoltaics evolution labs uh, that can do some sort of modeling um, and do some sort of, you know, onsite albedo measurements and uh, produce a pretty quick report uh, at low cost. Um, that can be something that can get an investor um, and yourself if uh, you're you're an investor um, in a project comfortable. Okay, great. All right, so we have another question for Nick. Um, do you see bifacial modules completely replacing monofacial eventually? What was the last part of the question? Replace? Replace monofacial panels eventually. So do you see bifacial um, I mean, personally, I don't see it being 100% because of those situations we've discussed. If you're on a comp shingle roof, you know, your typical 4 in 12 residential setting, we're still going to be supplying, I would, I would think. I mean, maybe eventually it'll get down, get down to a small percentage, but I see that, especially with the back, back, black back sheet for uh, aesthetics. But in the CNI space, I think this is getting more and more if the, if the economics, if the cost of the module and any other economics that come into play, if that's basically a wash, then you treat this as a, as a bonus. And the, the more we get um, comfortable with, with guaranteeing this, um, then, then the, the happier the finance guys are gonna be and the EPCs like uh, Scott said, you know, they're just gonna be more and more comfortable with this. It's, it's just going to happen. Going to 100%, I don't know about that. Okay. All right, great. Um, so question for Scott. Uh, have you seen that by offering bifacial modules, have you seen offering bifacial modules giving you an advantage over your competitors? And do you see many other solar integrators selling bifacial modules? Uh, it, for us, it ha we, 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 it's definitely an advantage, a niche for us, because we, you know, we, that's usually when people call us and looking for that. And so and we push it any chance we get, uh, you know, and um, on, on commercial and CNI around miles for carports. Um, I, we really do not see a lot of competition on, on, on this um, bifacial, because most of the people who are, again, are not comfortable, or just don't understand it. So when we come in and show them that, you know, our production, our production could be this much, you know, this much more, um, you know, and we guarantee, we stand behind and guarantee it. And so we, yeah, we win a lot of, win a lot of jobs, you know, because of that. And also, you know, we go a step further, you know, we, 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 we can prove it to them. We'll, we'll, we'll let people, um, we'll invite them into our, our we, cause on the bifacials, we use solar reds for everything and we'll invite them to uh, view the portal and they can actually look at real production themselves. And so they can prove it to themselves. They can go by the job. So, you know, we have, so yeah, so we, uh, we, uh, really, uh, think it's a, it's an advantage for us and we've taken, we've taken advantage of it. <laughs> Great. I think we haven't really talked about uh, warranty and the bankability of the brand. I mean, this is just, you know, uh, speaking on LG's behalf, you know, we, we have this all encompassing 25 year warranty. We're a diverse multinational company. So hopefully we're going to be around in the long term to be there for you in the, the warranty. It's a brand that's recognized by customers because they might have the, the fridge or the washing machine or the phone or whatever LG appliance. Um, they know that name, but I think the, the support and the security of the brand, I mean, day to day, I'm dealing with small installers 
and they have confidence that we're there for them. So it's always nice to hear stories like Scott said, you know, we've never had a failure, but you know that if you do have a, a failure, um, and those are rare, but that we're there for you, we take care of you, you get past that issue. And uh, I think that's, maybe that's just because that's what I'm living day to day, but um, it's been emphasized for me how, how important that, that really is. Um, and we do put, you know, for anybody who's listening who's really still not convinced about this, you know, on our data sheet, we have that, um, you know, the 400 with, in certain circumstances is a 425 and in a better circumstances, it's a, a 450. So if you've got those 100 watts or 200 watts per meter squared, I mean, on the back, that's what it produces. Um, for your particular setting, you know, that, that's a calculation you have to do, but, but it's on our data sheet in those circumstances, that's what it will produce. Okay, great. Okay, so here's a question for the group. Um, what have you seen in terms of bifacial performance as it relates to the newer and highly reflective roofing surfaces on efficient buildings? I can take that to start. Um, so I, I would just say that it is completely dependent upon your panel orientation and racking configuration. So you can't, you can't answer that question in a vacuum. For example, using the point load tracker uh, with really healthy spacing between the modules, um, you'll, you'll see a multiple on the gain that you would if you had a 10 or 15 degree tilt. So if you're going to get a couple percentage points on a 10 degree tilt, um, you're, going to, you're going to get a couple multiples more of that using the, the point load tracker. Um, so I, I just want to be, make sure that everyone's aware that when you think about these things, you can't say, what's my gain for this roof type? Or what's my gain for that racking type? You have to say, what's my gain for the point load tracker um, and this roof type? Um, and and I, I guess I just want to make sure that we're, we're always thinking about it in that way. Okay. Anyone have anything else um, for that question? I think that's why it was important at the beginning when we talked about those um, variables when Austin first kicked off, you know, height to reflectivity, ground cover ratio. You've got to figure that out for your site. So there are a number okay. of variables. Then you throw in the economics as a result of that figure out uh, where you stand. Yeah. And, and the point load power tracker is going to get you a lot more. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, all right, this question comes from Emma um, regarding snow. Uh, when the top of the panel is covered with snow and the bottom face is active from snow re reflectivity, the panel heats up from bottom face it from the bottom face using the melts of the snow lying on top. And she wants to know, basically, how does snow being on top and the reflectivity from the bottom side of the panel affect total gain? Yeah, so, I, yeah, uh, Nick had covered that a little bit uh, earlier uh, with, with some anecdotes about Canada. So I was just going to point that out. But Evan, if you have something new to add. Yeah, so um, this is actually an area of active research in the PV performance modeling community. Uh, so for those of you who follow that community, um, it's an area of active research. Um, it's also an area where there's been a lack of publication. So I think the hypothesis that um, Nick uh, walked us through in Canada is valid and the, the hypothesis that Emma has kind of outlined that the back of the panel will catch light, that light will heat up the cells, they'll act as resistors. Um, those thermal resistors will generate heat, the heat will melt the first layer of snow, and then the snow will slide off the module. So that, that hypothesis is, you know, scientifically self-consistent, um, and it makes sense intuitively. Um, I just want to point out that it, it hasn't been, there has not been much peer-reviewed published literature on that, on that item, um, and I've, I've had trouble underwriting to that. So while I think we're all, you know, nodding and we believe that it's real. Um, I just want to point out that um, trying to like put debt behind that assumption uh, could be could be problematic and difficult. Yeah. Okay. Um, question for Austin. Um, what gain have you seen with PV booster when using bifacial modules? So, um, 
taking into account all of the considerations and assumptions we talked about and the official answer being it depends. Yeah. Um, with uh, PV Booster is uh, designed in a way where it, it really maximizes uh, the four factors we were discussing as it relates to fixed uh, five and 10 degree roof mount uh, racking solutions. So um, the, the modules up higher, uh, the system is spaced out more. Um, we're tilted naturally at 30 degrees and we track azimuth. And then the reflectivity of the roof space um, all combine to uh, produce significantly more backside gain, um, in, not to mention the front side gain from tracking um, than a lot of the other mounting solutions that are out there. But uh, officially we've seen up to 70% more energy out of uh, mono fixed five degree uh, on a rooftop uh, for PV booster. And um, obviously that varies. We're, we were looking at 50 and 70, between 50 and 70 on a lot of different projects. So. Um, I'm happy to walk through uh, the production results with anybody using PV Syst uh, to detail the assumptions and go through the considerations there, but, uh, but it's been significant up to 70%. Great. Okay. Um, next question comes from Bill Carpenter. Um, so, are you aware, are any panelists aware of the difference or impact of the texture of the rooftop versus the color or ground surface? Um, specifically, uh, white, top, white rooftops are ideal for bifacial panels, but let's say you have a black roof or white gravel. Um, how do these different textures affect bifacial gain? Well, I, I mean, I think you probably have the better answer on that. You know, you guys probably have done of uh, you know, um, documented research, but I can tell you this though: we've seen we we've put them on we've put these on 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 uh, dirty roofs where you know they don't have a white background, and obviously white background is the best. And then but we have them on on tile, we have them on on uh, you know um, S tile, you know flat tile, you know uh, roll comp, and the, we have that one I told you about earlier that we've got the ground mount that's doing 480 80 watts uh, per panel right now. It's on. It's on dirt. It's not even. It doesn't even have white rocks. You know. So we're trying to get the guy to put rocks on it, and so it, it really. Again, it really, really depends. You know what what you're around. Like we see people that have. Like for example, we have people that have like you can you can have white near it. I have a guy that has like these. We do these. We do big ground mounts. By the way, we do like 25, 30, 50 kW ground mounts um, for residential where we live, and uh, we have people who have like white. You know, those white PV, uh, PVC fences. Even those will, will, will boost production if, if they're close enough. I mean, you know, we have one of all the top panels are, are, you know, are really producing because that white fence is there. So everything really comes into play. So it really, it really matters. And the, the lighter, the better. Also, um, it, this is kind of a new factor for me, but uh, the, the data sheets of the roofing material are available. There's usually a reflectivity uh, uh, metric that's on there that's a direct input for me on on pv syst as far as the reflectivity of the roof surface in year one so uh you can you can compare the roofing manufacturers have uh what their reflectivity index i'm not sure the exact term um is on the data sheet of whatever roofing material uh the client has or or you're going to install um, in these projects okay i can share the um slide deck that i mentioned earlier on from our dedicated uh, my facial module webinar and that has a table in there of um, albedo numbers so you know if you want to get more specific um, that's probably a good resource for you to look at those numbers but uh, yeah as everybody's saying white membrane is uh, a really awesome resource in this situation yeah okay great um, all right, another question from Emma. Uh, what exactly is the price difference between a typical monofacial and bifacial module? Oh, I tried not to answer this early on. <laughs> yeah, I can put you in touch with your local sales uh, manager. Okay. Okay. Right. But right now we're seeing it's, it's pretty close to uh, a wash, I would say, but, but that can be, you know, plus or minus. I don't know if, if Scott has direct experience. One thing I should mention, we have um, the bifacial module is the less powerful version of a 72 right now. So it's probably in the range 400 to 410. Um, Scott was talking about 390, so that's in that 
category. If you buy the regular mono, it's probably more like 410 to 420. That's just a, a way we've structured the, the production. So that's something out there too. And obviously you're pay, paying a premium if you're at the upper end of that band. So you know your sense per watt for a 420 will be slightly more than a 410. The 410 mono might actually be available also as a 410 by facial. So that's something to take into account. But happy to, to do the follow up if you want to really get into numbers. Okay. Yeah, after this webinar, I'm going, I'll send out a panelist contact info um, to attendees so you can ask Nick exactly uh, your questions. Um, okay, great. So here's our last question um, from Mike Ricci. Um, what do we have to consider for string length and calculations? For instance, with the gains from the back, what changes in voltage and current are imposed? I would just send you to the um, data sheets and uh, you know it's all on there the the change in current with that um, Wi-Fi 100 and 200 you'll see it right there and uh, you can see how to uh, how to use that in your calculations okay um all right so those are all of our questions um thank you guys so much for participating um this is Great, uh, we would like to have more conversations and webinars about bifacial modules and how they impact um, large projects. I'm sure we'll have more in the future, but thank you so much for attending. Um, panel or attendees, we're gonna be sending out a recording of this webinar, as well as all of our panelists contact information. Um, so if you have more questions or very specific questions, um, you can contact them that way, okay. Um, well, thank you so much, guys, for attending, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks, okay. everyone. Take care. Bye Cheers. Guys. Bye.